Jeffrey was never given proper life advice. He's 25 years old, and yet he's still lonely, broke, and weak. He's still sitting around waiting for someone to give him direction. You're wasting your life, Jeffrey. Yes. Adonis grew up with two loving parents. His father spent years teaching him about the game of life so that he knew when it was time to play, he'd take all the right moves. He lives with purpose, ambition, and drive. This is why Adonis is so successful. Number one, start self-improvement. Now, when you look around and you see your peers who are addicted to TikTok and porn and video games, you see that although they might be having some fun, they're not really doing much productive with their lives. The thing is that right here, right now, the time that you spend compounds exponentially. So if you spend an hour working, maybe an hour exercising, maybe an hour reading, those things are actually worth so much more than an hour because you're so young. And so every decision you make is kind of like, it's bigger than the decision itself. But every hour that your friends spend playing video games or every hour that they spend on TikTok, it's degrading their mental health, their physical health, they're just feeling lazy. You know, it fucks up their dopamine and now they can't even enjoy working or studying. At this age, one of the best things that you can do is start self-improvement. And if you just click on my channel profile, there's a video that presents itself on my channel as some trailer and it's a full guide to self-improvement. It's about an hour long. You can watch it kind of like a Netflix episode and it's got actionable steps. So watch that video when you're ready to take some action. Life lesson number two, be independent. Having the support of your parents and your friends is amazing but this is the time to really start to try and make some decisions for yourself and be okay with failure so that can be habit number three be okay with failure be okay with failure and making mistakes make some decisions for yourself like what you want to eat what you want to do what you want to choose for your your gcse's or your a levels and if it's a mistake or a failure that's okay at this age you need to have this lesson that it's okay to mess up in fact, every great person that you see before you, every successful person, every strong man, every rich guy, they've made countless of mistakes. They've had countless of failures. I have a video on my channel titled, I am a failure, and you might be interested in that. Number four, think about your future. It's normal right now to live in the moment. You know that phrase, YOLO, you only live once. That's what a lot of people your age use as an excuse to just maximize the pleasure that they get today. So, you know, oh, you only live once, so let's take drugs, let's keep playing video games, let's eat junk food, YOLO, YOLO. People do do that because they don't consider that they're still going to be alive to experience the consequences. This life lesson of thinking about your future is so important. You right here right now need to identify that you're most likely going to keep living, aren't you? You're going to be alive five years from now, 10 years from now. You can be silly all you are, but what if I get hit by a butt? Just shut up, bro. Come on, let's be serious. You're going to be alive for a long time. Like what age do you actually want to live to? Maybe you've never even asked this question to yourself before. And you know, in your mind, you're just thinking, oh, like a uh, uh, 79, because that's the average age that, you know, a man lives. No, no, no. Fuck the average. What age do you want to live to? 100? Let's say 100 right? Well, you've identified you're going to be alive for that amount of time. And so you've got to make sure that you set your life up in a way that you're still having a good life. Because if you plan to live a long life, then surely you'll want to still be fit and healthy and wealthy when you're 50. Maybe even when you're 60, you still want to be able to like run around and go to the gym. Most people don't consider this. They don't think about their future. They don't think about the consequences of their actions. And so they do things that gives them the most amount of like pleasure and fun and, and happiness today, which is usually just indulging in things that actually make your life in the future worse. Most people overindulge in instant gratification. So they'll spend today just playing video games, eating junk food, taking drugs, and they don't realize that that's going to make their future worse. If this is you right here, right now, start to think about your future self as like a separate identity. Start to literally start to like create this image of your future self, this guy who is you in the future, see him in your mind and you want the secret to a good life. Do whatever it takes to make him grateful for you. When you look back to your younger self, maybe you have some level of like self-hate because that little shit didn't study when he was supposed to. He ate the junk food, he took the drugs, he wasted time. And sure, you know, he was young and stuff, but like you do have this level of like negativity towards your younger self and that's no way to live. That's how most people live. But as you get onto self-improvement, you know, you follow the first life lesson that we talked about and you start to do things for your future self and you stick to this as best as you can for months or years, eventually you become that future future version of yourself. And you can't help but just look back to you today and feel grateful for you. Because, you know, for me, it wasn't me who built this YouTube channel with a million subscribers. It wasn't me who built this physique in the gym. It was my younger self. So when I think back about like younger me, and you know, when I think about myself, I feel happy because I took the right decisions, even though they were painful at the time. You know, I had to do all these like hard work tasks and I had to go to the gym when I didn't feel like it. I did those hard things so that I today could enjoy the rewards of them. And so I love myself. I'm so happy 
happy that younger me set me up for success, but what if I spent the last two years smoking weed? What if I never thought about my future? Well, me today, I'd be looking back thinking, come on, man, you stole my success, my happiness for your own indulgence and pleasure. And that's no way to live. Make sure you think about your future. Number five, be immune to negative peer pressure. Peer pressure is when your friends or the people around you, maybe your family, maybe society, maybe the media, maybe YouTubers, convince you to do something that probably isn't good for you. So this is why I've called it negative peer pressure because some peer pressure could be a good thing. If you're all friends with a bunch of rich guys and they're like, come on, man, make, make your own business. That's, that's positive peer pressure and we want that in our lives. But usually peer pressure is usually quite negative. It's from like degenerate friends who are telling you like, oh, come on, bro, one more game, bro. Don't log off of Discord just yet, bro. One more game. Or if you're a little bit older and you're taking drugs, it's like, oh, go on, bro, just have a smoke, bro. Just, just have a smoke. A lot of young guys fall victim to peer pressure. Why? <laughs> because we're lonely as fuck. And the thing is, as humans, we are tribe creatures. Like we are like supposed to be in a tribe. We're supposed to be around other people. And so when we're so lonely and we see the way to actually have a vibrant social life, it's to be degenerate with the degenerates. It's to be playing video games with the video gamers. It's to be taking drugs with the drug addicts. Like sometimes we just fall victim to this because we'd rather have this negative consequence of, you know, taking drugs than just being lonely. Like loneliness is one of the worst things that can happen. But sometimes it can be better to be alone. Honestly, it's pretty much always better to be alone than it is to be surrounded by bad people who don't even like you, who don't even want the best for you. Make sure you stay immune to the negative peer pressure that can come from some, you know, people from your friends, your family, from even the media, bro. If you go onto TikTok right now or, or anything, if you listen to songs on Spotify, you're experiencing some level of peer pressure. You're hearing these rappers talk about making money, fucking bitches, taking drugs, killing people. And it, you might think, oh, you know, that doesn't do anything to me. The thing is, it does slightly change what you desire. If you, every day you listen to some degenerate content, you listen to like, you know, degenerates talking about like some female rappers, eh, fucking Ma Megan Thee Stallion, eh, fuck, fuck off. You hear, listen to her like talking about like getting dicked down by her drug dealer or something like that. Like it, it is gonna change you as a person. It absolutely will. Like you must have this humility to admit like you're not some rock solid bulletproof person who these outside influences can't change you at all. I will admit right now, like I've been on self-improvement for a while. I'm kind of, you know, confident, quite independent guy. The outside world still influences me heavily. So if you're quite a young, impressionable teenager, you should just take some moments. The next time you're about to consume some kind of content or the next time you're about to speak to someone and just ask yourself, what is your life going to be like if you become just like this person? If you've got a friend who smokes weed all the time and you know, you always smoke with him, like you're going to become like that friend. He's probably getting bad grades. He's probably going to be broke all of his life. You don't want to be like that. If you're watching content from inspiring, strong, masculine men, honestly, by following it, you're probably going to become more like that. If you follow Andrew Tate and he's saying, yeah, get into the gym and do push-ups and make money, you're probably going to become a little bit more like Tate every time. If you watch my videos and I tell you about mental health and self-improvement, you're probably going to become a little bit more like me. If you listen to fucking Lil Nas twerking on the devil, if you watch like this degenerate content, then you're probably going to become more like that. And leading on from that, life lesson number six is to not change your principles to fit in. You have inside of you some core values and principles, most likely that your parents put inside of you, or maybe your religion or anyone who is quite important to you. And sometimes you can become very aware that you've started to sacrifice your principles and your values to try and fit in around those people. And maybe, you know, there's an element of peer pressure there. It'd be so worth your time right here, right now to just pause the video and just ask yourself, what do you value? What are your principles? Do you really value honesty? Well, if you respect yourself, then you can't be friends with liars. Do you really value discipline? Well, then if you respect yourself, you can't be friends with someone who isn't disciplined or at least trying to become disciplined. You know, being friends with someone who's not very disciplined, but he's trying it, okay, fair enough. But being friends with someone who doesn't even care about discipline and he just wants to play video games and, and eat junk food, is, you two don't match. If the last few minutes of this video is really relevant to you and you, you know, you're thinking about some particular friends right now, I have a video on my second channel called They're Not Your Friends and you might be interested in that. If you just search Hamza, they're not your friends on YouTube, you'll be able to see it. Number seven, earn respect. There's a few ways to earn respect and they're, they're very practical. The fastest way to earn the respect of someone instantly, literally the moment that they look at you, is to literally just be bigger, be physically bigger as a man. Like the bigger you are as a man in terms of muscle will get you the respect of other guys. Now you don't need to be some like big steroid meathead or something, but if you're pretty skinny right now or you're skinny fat or you're just fat, the thing is when someone instantly looks at you, their respect for you is not gonna be high. Honestly, I'm just gonna say this right now. I'm gonna tell you my at least truth and maybe this is relevant for other people. If I see some skinny guy, it's like, I don't, I don't respect him straight away. If I see some fat guy, I don't respect him. If I see some guy who's in shape, there's an instant level of respect and like this sort of like, almost like a level of admiration where I'm like, yeah, fair enough, he's put in some work. If you want that kind of effect from people, as soon as they look at you, they literally just respect you and even girls as well. You need to just go to the gym, start doing some resistance training, which essentially means like body weight exercises, weightlifting or calisthenics. You know, the kind of things that you do like for reps, for sets and you use weight or something. Those are the things that will build muscle. And when you build muscle, you get so much more 
more respect. It's the single greatest thing you can do. I have like free workout routines that you can find in the description as well. After that, you can continue to skyrocket how much respect you're getting from people by the work that you do and the success that you've built up. You see, life as a masculine man is all about just work. In the modern day, there's a lot of feminine men out there who are trying to escape work and you know that you don't like working, you just want to play, you just want to like, you know, just chill and be lazy. That's a trait of feminine men who try and like, you know, avoid work. A masculine man craves work. It's just fun as fuck. It's the only thing that you really want to spend your time doing. And so other masculine men judge each other on the work that the person does and the amount of success that they've built up. So if you do want to get the respect of masculine men, work and build something successful. Number eight, give respect. Now, if you want the respect of other people, well, we all do. If you're the person who gives respect to other people and not, you know, not in a fake way, don't just respect someone for no reason. But if you're open with how much you admire and respect someone and you just tell them, oh, I respect you for that. Wow, you've got such a nice physique. Yeah, respect, man. I've got a lot of respect for that discipline. Well, everyone wants respect. So you're giving people what they want. This is a fundamental principle of social skills. So if you want to be more socially connected with other people, give them what they want. They want some praise. They want acknowledgement for the things that they've worked hard on, especially men, especially masculine men. Masculine men are quite independent and you know, they, they just work on their own things anyway. So they don't need this. But if you do compliment a masculine man for the work and the success that he's built, trust me when I say like, he will appreciate it heavily and he will remember you. Don't do this in a way to kiss ass. Like, oh, I'll do this and hopefully they'll like me. But just do it because you actually really do respect the guy. So make sure you don't do this in a fake way where, you know, there's someone that you don't even like, you don't even respect, but you're just like practicing this anyway. Literally go and find the guys that you look up to. Go and find the guys that you respect. Maybe it's Andrew Tate, maybe it's me. Maybe it's like some other role model that you know. And literally just comment, message them, email them and just tell them like, yeah, like I respect the work that you've done. And you know, I've watched you for a while. Like when you say these things, the guy at the top who seems like this big guy, like bro, he crumbles and he's like, suddenly he just seems like a human figure when you're speaking to him like you're a man. And it's a nice transformation for you to go through as well because your identity changes when you're the guy telling someone like Andrew Tate, like, yeah, like you, I really respect you. Suddenly you're not like some like little follower fan or anything. Like he's going to look at you like you're a man. Number nine, don't be afraid of outgrowing your friends. So this is somewhat similar to the element of peer pressure that we covered, but this is something that a lot of young guys who are consuming this kind of content go through. There's an issue with the friends that you have when you're young, you know, can you guess what it is? There is one huge issue that it's so obvious. It seems like you and your friends became friends because of the people you are and you know, you like each other. You didn't actually, honestly, the biggest reason why you become friends when you're young with someone else is literally just because you go to the same school together. It's as simple as that. You literally just become friends with people that you have to sit next to. It's just like how coworkers are friends. It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like if you don't hang out outside of school, like significantly, then they're not even friends to begin with. Just the same as like coworkers. If they don't hang out outside of work, then they're not friends to begin with. But let's say that there is a good group of friends that you have right now. And you've already started to feel this concept of like, yeah, you're almost outgrowing them. They're still acting like little fucking boys playing video games, eating junk food like children. And you actually want to start looking into like business and being productive. And your friends find that like gay. For some reason, they just call it gay or they call it weird. Like, oh, why, why are you trying so hard or something? It's okay to abandon people. Like, I know that sounds like really sad and stuff, but it, honestly, like a lot of successful people have done this. As you improve and people in your life just stay the same, it's like you're no longer relatable. And so when you do respect yourself enough to not waste time with people that you don't even enjoy being around anymore, you take a big step back from it. Now, you don't have to do this in some cringe way where you message them the last message, oh, goodbye, everyone. But just slowly just distance yourself. You know, the, the group chats popping right now on Discord or WhatsApp or whatever, or Snapchat, don't open it. You know, they're oh, are you going to come online today, bro? Don't reply. See them in school or whatever, whenever you usually see them and, you know, just be kind of nice to them, but just focus on your work and your studies, whatever. And slowly and surely, they'll just kind of like move on without you. And you'll realize like, honestly, you were never that close anyway. Like they just moved on from like easily. Half the guys in your friendship group don't even care about you. At least one of the guys in there actively dislikes you. And there's usually just one friend who likes you, but who might be like just not on your level anymore. And he's usually the one I really recommend trying to bring on to self-improvement. So you probably have one guy who's actually like really fucking nice. And like, you know, you actually get along with each other. There's no like ill feelings. There's no time where he's like made fun of you or anything. That's usually the guy that I recommend. Like, yeah, like bro, get him onto self-improvement, send him some of these videos, tell him to start meditating, tell him to start getting into the gym. He might do. Oftentimes what really happens is like the guy who's listening to this tries to get his friend onto self-improvement, being productive, and then his friend just doesn't. And then their relationship diffuses anyway. I've, I've honestly never met really anyone who's successfully been able to like get their friends onto self-improvement because I think it's a very individual solo journey. You really have to desire this by yourself. Life lesson number 10, show gratitude and especially to your parents. A lot of young guys don't actually do this. Like this is the age when you really start to want to take a big step away from your parents' control and you want to be your own man. And you know, at the start of this, this video, I did tell you, yeah, be independent. But with being independent, you can still be very grateful for your parents, especially. I only ever showed gratitude to my parents when I was around 23 years old. And through all my teenage life, I was so convinced they were bad people. I hated them. Cause you know, 
know, they, they'd shout at me and they were controlling and, you know, sometimes like there was abusive stuff going on. And so I only ever saw my parents negatively. It was only years later where I actually began to like relate to them. You know, I started working full time and when I worked like a shitty full time job, I literally just looked at my father in a different way and I just thought like, holy fuck, this man has devoted his life to us. Like I needed to, to work full time first to be able to relate to my father who was working full time to provide for the family for like, you know, 20 years, working two jobs. And suddenly I started to realize like, wait, he has to absolutely love us if he's worked like that to provide for us. That's when I became grateful. I'm glad that I became grateful for them at this moment and we were able to improve our relationship. But some part of me does wish like, what if I just was grateful 10 years earlier? Imagine how different our relationship would have been. So this is a message to you right now. No matter how you feel about your parents, I guarantee there's things that you can be grateful for. And especially right now, if you are so certain that there's nothing to be grateful for, I really, really urge you to just sit down and spend half an hour on this. If you can just like trust what I'd say and just blindly try it, this will literally change your life forever. Sit down with a document open on your PC or your you know, notes pad on your phone and just ask, what could I be grateful for of my parents? And the first few answers will literally take a while and you'll be so pissed off thinking, yeah, and you know, you'll write some like condescending sarcastic shit or something. Oh yeah, I'm grateful that they abused me or something. But like if you really dedicate yourself to this and really try and do it seriously, your life will never be the same afterwards because I did it and I, you know, I, I was joking around and thought, oh yeah, I'm, I'm glad my, my dad slapped me. Ha, ha. Like he was such a bad person. Like eventually I started writing some good things. And so then I started writing, like, I'm grateful that my father worked 60 to 80 hours a week, every single week for as long as I can remember. When I'd wake up early to go to school, he was already out working. I'd come back home, he'd still be at work. He'd come home from work when it was dark at like 6 p.m., 7 p.m., stay up for like one hour, two hours, then go to bed and do it again. Why? to provide for his family. I was certain there was nothing to be grateful for. It took me 20 minutes to come up with that and then I realized, oh, he loved me all this time. Life lesson number 11, take responsibility and ownership of everything that happens. It's very easy for you right now, since you are quite young, to not take ownership of certain things. So if there's a problem that happens, if there's an accident, if you know something messes up, it's very easy for you right now to just kind of, you know, push off the blame a little bit to someone else and to say, oh, you know, it's it's um, it's the school's fault that I've been getting bad grades. Oh, you know, it's my parents' fault that I'm fat. Oh, you know, it's my parents, it's my mum's fault that I'm not muscular because she won't let me get protein powder. It's so easy for you to blame someone else. But the teenagers who go on to become strong, successful men start to take ownership of everything. And this might piss you off a little bit because you might be sat here right now saying, but no, 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 no but it really is someone else's fault. And the thing is, objectively, by the, the objective truths of the universe, it might be someone else's fault. But you don't gain anything from saying that. You see, you gain the most when you take total ownership, control, and responsibility of every situation in your life. So why not try that next time some like bullshit happens next time you get bad grades or the next time a glass shatters or whatever it is Blame it on yourself in a mature way I'm responsible for that and I'm gonna try my best not to let that happen again lesson number 12 have some humility now humility is the skill of Disobeying your ego your ego is this thing inside of you that thinks you're so amazing Everyone else is is really bad You're better than everyone else and that you don't really need to learn anything else like you're already so great Ego is what leads a lot of people to to initial success, you know, because they believe, yeah, I'm so great. And so they end up making some progress, but then they actually get complacent and they fail after that. So this is when you see someone who's gotten hundred K subscribers or 500 K and then their channel just dies or disappears afterwards. It was ego. Ego is the thing that convinces you that you don't really need to learn or develop anything in terms of becoming more successful, right? You probably don't even realize that you have this massive ego that, you know, you oh, yes, you're so amazing. Guess where you actually got it from. It's so interesting. Guess where you got a massive ego from this idea of like, yeah, you're so amazing. You don't need to change yourself from the politically correct like western society you know this sort of like society that tells little boys and little girls yeah you're so amazing here's a participation trophy you're so amazing you're you're a superstar you don't need to change anything about yourself and so these kids are growing up with this weird self-image which is so heightened and eventually when reality hits them and they realize like yeah they're not that great this is when depression occurs it's actually more valuable for you to think to yourself like yep i'm not that great right now but i strive to become it i'm not that advanced and my skills aren't that high right now but i'll keep learning and i'll keep improving so when you develop the skill of humility, that's when you start to see these holes inside of you and you start to like just not in a self-deprecating way, but almost in a level of awareness and analysis. You look at some of your weaknesses and you think to yourself, yeah, I could improve that part of me. My social skills aren't that great because if they were, I'd have more friends. So I need to improve my social skills. I'll read some books on that. You know what? Like I, I really like a girlfriend, but girls don't seem attracted to me for some reason. I, I'll start researching what girls are actually attracted in. And maybe I'll start like going to the gym more and I'll get more like fit and I'll look better. Maybe I'll learn like how to actually 
actually date and speak to girls better because I, I'm probably not that good at it just yet. With that skill of humility, you'll actually go on to make more progress. Life lesson number 13, don't focus too much on the past. So maybe you're watching this and quite often you recap some mistakes that you made in the past. So before I just said, you know, successful men make a lot of mistakes and that's fine. Well, the thing is the successful man who's made these mistakes and failures, he doesn't look back with this sense of like depression and sadness all the time. But I've seen a lot of teenagers do this, especially with grades. You look back at the past that you didn't really study that well and then you get some bad grades and you keep looking back and you keep feeling like shit because of it. It does nothing to serve you. This is one of the reasons why I really like one of Andrew Tate's mindsets where he says that there's no reason having beliefs that don't serve you. You should only keep in mind the things that actually help you. And if looking back to some mistake or some failure keeps making you feel bad and not in any kind of like encouraging way, there's no value in doing that. It's just like self-deprecating. It's, it's literally just self-harm at that point. Try your best not to look back into the past and the, the way you do that is by working as hard as you possibly can on the present instead of even spending five minutes feeling depressed about something that happened a while ago like some girl broke up with you or you got rejected or you got bad grades go and spend those five minutes reading a book and studying and working out at least that's going to create something different for you and so leading on to this number 14 stop worrying about the future again a bunch of young students have this where you know you're so scared of this upcoming exam and it's so like there's so much pressure and the thing is i don't even blame you i'm a very big advocate for talking about the issues of the education system. I think it's a corrupt, silly, stupid, inhumane system that you go through when you have to go to school as a child, honestly. And one of my like long-term goals has been to like reform the education system because I just, I think it's fucked the school system, honestly. The fact that you go through so much pressure and so much stress at such a young age to prepare for these like fucking one day, you know, like just one specific exam that you've got to remember all this shit for. Then you've just got to forget everything you just learned to remember something for the next exam. It's so, like the systems are stupid. But either way, worrying about the future is not going to help you. Now, the system is stupid and, you know, leave it to me. I'll try and change it for you. But right here, right now, you worrying about the future is not going to serve you in any positive way. You should prepare for the future. You know, you've got some upcoming exams, so study today. You want to get a girlfriend later on in the future when you've got more free time? Well, start to go to the gym right now and, you know, get more in shape and, you know, build some muscle, cut down some body fat, look good, smell good. Prepare for the future, but worrying for it. Well, there's no value in that, is there? There's, there's no benefit to yourself. And I get it because I'm quite a worrier myself. I have a tendency to feel quite anxious at things that could happen and I worry about you know situations not happening in my favor so I get it. it like it just happens automatically doesn't it you don't actually sit there thinking oh yeah like, I'm gonna go panic about the future right now it just you know pops into your mind the way to control your mind you know I've told you a lot about stop worrying about the future or the past or you know like a lot of like mindset things the way to change your mind and how it thinks is to just forcefully manually think the thoughts that you want so maybe your mind is automatically you know regurgitating the thoughts about the upcoming exam and you're feeling anxious again just manually say the words in your brain like i'm gonna prepare for it i'm not gonna waste any time just worrying right now i'm gonna go and study right now for an extra 10 minutes today that's gonna make a difference life lesson 15 be present presence is when you're totally focused in the here and now rather than in your mind somewhere else so oftentimes you can just find yourself deep in thought about something instead of actually just experiencing real life as we are today maybe you've been watching this video and you've barely even been hearing my words because in your own brain is like irrelevant thoughts sometimes it can be so hard to catch yourself when you're so deep in thought and only when you do catch yourself you realize like fuck like i haven't been present for the last like 10 minutes i've just been afk you know the phrase afk away from keyboard most people are afk and it's no way to live like you'll probably see this in some of your friends who are really addicted to video games and social media and, and you'll see this in a lot of girls as well who are addicted to tiktok they're literally just afk as you speak to them like their attention spans all fuck like they're you see their eyes like fully in away from them and everything the cure to this and honestly the cure to a lot of problems is meditation i have a 10 minute follow along meditation it's easy as hell to do literally 10 minutes and i'll have like a card pop up and you can follow with that number 16 learn from the mistakes of others men learn from their mistakes but a wise man learns from the mistakes of others so if you want to be this wise man seek out the advice and the mentorship of men who have probably experienced the path that you want to go down and there's no better time in history to have this desire you can literally go onto youtube and find someone who's already achieved the life that you want and chances are he's already got a podcast where he's speaking for like 50 hours just talking about his life and the problems that he went through and the mindsets that caused him to be successful. It's such an amazing time. This is why like podcasts and books and YouTube videos are so valuable because you can literally just find the kind of man that you want to be like and just learn directly from him. And so the mistakes that he talks about, you can just try and avoid and save yourself some time on the journey. So if you see on my YouTube channel, we have like 700 videos and at the start of every single video after the Jeffrey and Adonis intro, I tell you my mistake that's relevant to the video title. So maybe it's a video about obsessing over a girl too much. Well, in that video, I'll tell you about the exact story where I obsessed over a girl too much and why it was a mistake 
mistake because probably chances are she didn't like me back and I just wasted time. And then I try and convince you to not make the same mistake as me. That means that I wasted months of my time, you know, being obsessed with some girl who didn't like me. And by you just watching a 10 minute video, you could probably save those months of pain yourself. I think that concept of learning from another man, that's like such an incredible thing that we can do with the internet. Because before this, the only kind of life lessons you could get was from the village elders in our tribe. And now you can get the life lessons as we're covering in this video from a guy who might be across the globe from you. Number 17, stand up straight with your shoulders back. This is a chapter from Jordan Peterson's book, 12 Rules for Life, and I really like it. And it goes way deeper than just body language and posture. And the short version is that the better your body language, the happier you're gonna be, the more dopamine you're gonna produce, the more serotonin you're gonna produce, and even the more testosterone you're gonna produce. A lot of guys with like fucked up posture are literally showing that they are like a weak man. And when you show that to the world, the world responds to you as if you know, you're know you some weak, fragile man who's got like fucked up posture. And when the world responds to you like you're a weak man, well then the inside of you literally changes to that. Like if, if everyone treats you like a beta male little bitch, your testosterone's gonna go down. So when you walk into a new place or just 24 seven, keep your posture as good as you can naturally make it. Number 18, talk loudly and confidently. Now you don't need to overdo this and start shouting at people or you know, trying to like fake a deep voice like this or anything. Don't be stupid with it. But there's a lot of young guys who talk very timidly. Like they'll be speaking like this, they'll be hiding their breath away. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. You know, there's a lot of like, uhs, uhs, like those phrases, which just reeks of like a lack of confidence. As a young man, this is the time now to start developing your speech and your personality to be this guy who speaks like I am today. Like I'm not, you know, overly doing it. I'm not purposely trying to, you know, act confident or anything. Now, sure, I'm speaking a little bit more loud than I normally would just, you know, because we're recording a video and everything. But if you can speak like this, you'll be able to convey your message across and people will actually be able to listen to you and they'll have fun listening to you. No one likes listening to a guy who speaks like a little bitch. And I don't say this to be offensive, but you know, a lot of guys speak so timidly, like they have no balls and they just speak like, you know, with fleeting eye contact, speaking to the ground instead of to you, look them in the eye and speak loud enough that they could still hear you if they were stood one feet further back. Number 19, have patience. For a lot of the things that you want to do, whether it's build a great body or, you know, try and start some businesses, make some money or get some good grades. It takes quite a lot of time to do this stuff. This is something that a lot of guys struggle with. A lot of guys don't have the ability to be patient. And so they end up trying something Thing, not seeing the results fast enough and then just giving it up. And then they try something else and then they try something else. They've got the shiny object syndrome that stems from impatience. If you can be the guy who sticks to something that you know that you'll want to do for the rest of your life and you're patient with it, you'll get the results. For me, that was weightlifting and building a muscular, aesthetic, strong body. I started at age 70 and I literally saw myself still age 60, age 70, being muscular and strong and still going to the gym. I had this level of patience. So I knew that, okay, I don't have to like get the fastest results possible. Nine years later, and I'm still trying training consistently. I had the patience for the results and sure, like, you know, my, my progress has been quite slow in terms of the gym progress, but I've never quit. And I far surpassed a lot of people who had better genetics than me or higher testosterone or started in like a better place or trained better than me just because I was patient with it. If you're patient and you just stick to something for the long term, you'll often get better results than the guy who's even genetically superior, but he just hasn't trained for that long. Life lesson number 20, start learning about making money and finances right now. When I was a teenager, none of this even occurred to me, honestly. Like I just went through the normal school system just thinking, yeah, well, you know, right now we're in high school, then we'll go to college or university and, you know, I'll get a degree. And like, I never even realized that even when I was a teenager and I was in school, I could start learning about these things right now. And the single greatest way to do this is to read books. There's absolutely no better way to start learning about how to make money than to literally just read some of the most core books. I have a list of all of the self-help books that I recommend, which is in the description of this video. Number 21, develop valuable skills. Now you've probably heard this phrase before. You've probably heard a bunch of YouTubers tell you, oh yeah, develop skills skills, but they never go into more detail than that. And so you just hear this cool sounding phrase, okay, yeah, I should develop skills. And then you don't even know what the fuck it even means or what to do. So skills are things that we all have and we all do. But of course, when you develop a skill, then it gets better, right? So it's almost the same concept as skills in a video game. Like we all start with the same kind of skills. Like we all have, you know, the, the attack skill, the strength skill, the magic skill, the, the hit point skill. We all have the same skills. But then of course, what you focus on and level up gets better and you get more rewards from it. And real life is exactly the same. So the skills that we have, for example, are communication, influence, sales, dating, confidence, mental strength, physical strength. All of these things are literally just skills that we can develop. And so there's some valuable skills that you can start to develop right now. And I'd say the one that I would just recommend to you is social skills. So social skills is the skill that you use when you're speaking to other people. And a lot of young guys or just a lot of guys or a lot of people in general have such poor social skills. They've got weird social mannerisms. They're just like not confident, fleeting eye contact, weird body language, like they're just AFK or something. They just talk weird they ask weird questions like they don't even know how to like be in a normal conversation and then they just feel lonely after that so social skills is the 
first skill that I think you should start with, and there's no greater book to do that than How to Win Friends and Influence People. That book's linked in the description along with all the other books, but also I have a full guide to this book that I'll have linked somewhere as a card. I forgot what number we're on. I think that was 20. So 21 can be a suggestion from someone in our live stream. I'm live streaming right now as I record this video. And someone said, find a community of like-minded individuals. So once you've developed your social skills, why not start joining communities which you've got an interest in? So for example, you're watching this video right now. You're interested in this topic that we're talking about of like, you know, life lessons for teenagers, self-improvement, developing yourself. So you'd fit in in our community. Linked in the description of this video is our Discord server. There's like 130,000 young men in there. There is literally always video calls that are running actively. You can join a community like this, join the Discord server completely for free, nothing to sell you at all in there. And literally just like start making friends with other people. You'll go in and you'll literally see some other 16 year old talking about how he's made $500 last month. And people just teach this stuff for free in my Discord server. Like literally people are just there, just teaching each other like free tactics that they've learned to improve their lives. When you join a community of like-minded individuals, you have the same goals as them and they might have solved a problem that you're currently going through. So go to the description of this video right now and click on that Discord server link right now. I've just got a suggestion from one of the guys watching this live stream. His name's The Bored Teen. And he said, another life lesson is figuring out how to look better. Now your looks, your physical looks, like your appearance is so much more important than you've been made to believe. Because there's this advice that feels really good, which is, you know, you're so you're so valuable. You're such a beautiful young man. Like, you know, your, your mom's saying this to you. Like, oh, you're, you're, so, you're such a beautiful young man. You're so handsome. Like, bro, chances are you're, you're not. Honestly, chances are you're actually not that attractive. If you were attractive right now, you would know. You would literally have all of the girls messaging you. You would have an abundance of girls who were interested in you, who wanted to date you, who maybe wanted to get like even more sexual with you if you were attractive. Chances are you're just not that physically attractive just yet. Too many guys overlook this with this attitude of like, oh, but I don't care what anyone thinks of me. And I've always found that so weird. So many teenagers are adopting this mindset of like, oh, I don't care what anyone thinks. That's so, so unnatural. Think about it. We're tribal creatures. Of course we care what other people in our tribe think about us. The people in your school or who you've got on social media or your family or your friends, their opinions of you should actually matter. Like, and I'm no, like I know I'm the first person who's ever said this to you, but the people around you, their opinions should matter to you. You should care what people think about you. I'm literally the only person on the internet who actually says this. Everyone else is giving you this cringe Sigma male personality. Like, oh yeah, I don't care what anyone thinks. I'll just die of loneliness by myself. I don't care if I don't get invited to parties. I don't care if I don't have any friends. Like, shut up. What a sad way to live, bro. Like, literally, the better way to live is to care what the most valuable, the most like upstanding people of your tribe think about. It's normal and it's good to want to be acknowledged by your tribe of being like a good young man. And improving your looks is one of the best ways that you can do that. The single greatest way to improve your looks is to build your aesthetic body, to get that lean fuckboy, TikTok boy kind of physique. Again, those free workout routines are linked in the description. If you follow those routines and you keep going to the gym and you start eating a little bit cleaner and you start packing on some like lean muscle mass, you're gonna significantly improve how hot you look. One final life lesson by Clay is learn to do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it. There's a reason why I end every single one of my videos with that phrase. And you can go and check, bro. You can go, literally go click on any video. And I've ended the video by saying, do the hard work especially when you don't feel like it. That phrase, do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it, encapsulates the meaning of discipline. Discipline is the single most important thing that men need, masculine men. If you wanna become a masculine, strong, successful man, you need discipline. You need to go and do the work that is required of you, even when you don't feel like doing it. Too many young guys are so invested in their emotions and their feelings. And I don't blame you because you're being told by all these like these manipulative people that young men should be emotional, that you should be in with your oh, shut up. You're being told this stuff by people who want you to be weak. The thing is, the girls who tell you like, oh yeah, but men should be emotional. Men should cry, bro. They're not fucking guys who cry. Simple as that. They're not fucking the guys who are like being little bitches next to them. Simple as that, bro. The people who told you like, oh, men should be emotional. They're not going to respect you when you take the day off work because you didn't feel like it. They're going to respect the strong man who's built a successful business and become rich because he was disciplined. They're going to respect the athlete who goes and trains in the rain, in the cold, when he doesn't feel like it. Everyone respects discipline, but in the modern day, they're trying to take discipline out of young men because they want you to be weak and controllable and we can get into the conspiracy theories there but those were 23 life lessons for teenagers share this video if you've got any other teenage friends and click and watch this video right now do the hard work especially when you don't feel like it Mwah.